So, UFC 299 is this weekend, and I've decided instead of doing just a long-winded prediction video where I go on rants on every single, like, fighter that I'm even remotely interested in, I'm, I'm instead going to save you guys some time, give you guys the entertaining bits, and I'm going to give you kind of a dedicated video to every fight that I think as an MMA fan, new or a veteran, you should be keeping an eye out for, and I just want to discuss it for you. The subject of this video is Piotr Jan. It's just Piotr Jan. Piotr Jan's going to be fighting Song Yudong this weekend. And I've been watching the sport enough. Let me tell you what the UFC is doing. And y you can grieve and mourn in the comment section down below. Or you can grieve and mourn after UFC 299 is concluded. That's on you. But let me tell you what the UFC is doing. Song Yudong is a young up-and-coming prospect in the bantamweight division. He is a key into a market that the UFC wants to get into, an untapped market in the MMA sphere, that being the Chinese market. The biggest markets in MMA that have been untapped ever since the beginning is India. There's no good Indian fighters. Just gonna say it. Your best dude got smoked by an American can. India's not good at fighting. China has Zhang Wei Li. However, if I'm gonna be brutally honest with you, China doesn't really give a shit about a women's champion. They don't. Why, why do you... Yeah, they don't. Like, I'm, I'm not even going to pretend that's the case. They want Song Yudong. Okay? Song Yudong's good. Song Yudong actually beat Shido Vera early in his career. Had a fight of the night performance against Corey Sanhagen. Proved that he has that dog in him. And in all honesty, I do like Song Yudong. It just irks me that what the UFC is doing now is they've turned this fight from a five-round main event, UFC Singapore... And now they've changed it to a three-round fight on UFC 299. They did not need to do this. This card did not need this fight. You could have rescheduled this as the main event of whatever Tai Tuivasa is fighting Tai Bura at the apex. You're telling me that's a main event of a fight night? But Pyotr Yam or Song Yadong just has to go on this card? Really? That That's what we're doing right now? The reason that this fight is not a fight night main event and Tai Tuivasa vs. Tai Bura is, is because the UFC's made up their mind. Pyotr Jan has a way bigger advantage in a five round fight. I love Pyotr Jan. One of my favorite fighters to watch fight. Pyotr Jan vs. Corey Sanhagen is in my top five best fights of all time. I will re-watch that just about every month. It's so good. However, Pyotr Jan might have some of the worst or best pace options in MMA ever. Like, he, it doesn't matter if he is way better than his opponent. He will almost always take the first, second, third round off and then turn it up in the fourth and the fifth. Against somebody like Son O'Malley. That is not a, a pace that you want to go through. That's one reason why I do believe O'Malley won. I understand O'Malley won the third fight. But there is a world of difference between preparing, fighting, like, even, like, mentally preparing for a five-round fight and a three-round fight. Understand that if the UFC wanted to make the odds in favor of Jan, they would make this a five-round fight. But they're not going to. They're making this three-round because it favors Yudong. They want Yudong to win because they want to get him into that Chinese market. That's just the brutal reality of it. Also, we can also get in the money. They're paying Pyotr Jan more than they're paying Yadong. Facts. Facts of the matter. Why would they want to pay Pyotr Jan more money when they can pay Song Yadong less to fight the same caliber of competition? Because this is a young and hungry combat sports athlete that wants to bring the belt to the country that's never had a UFC title and potentially become a superstar. That is what they want to do. Now that that's out of the way... Is this the end? Is, uh, l let me think of it like this. Pyotr Jan, the one thing that P Pyotr Jan has going for him is he is one of the most exciting fighters in the UFC. People that are saying that Pyotr Jan's going to get cut after this loss if he does lose. I No, he's not going to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say no. Because he, the fact is, when the UFC cuts an athlete, th there, there's a few things that have to proceed the UFC cutting somebody. Number one, losses. Okay? No, like, that. that is the number one thing. There has to be losses, and there has to be a disagreement with the company. The guy that beat Jubilee won the fight, missed weight, 
They cut him right after that. Because one, they're probably salty he beat Jubilee in their chances of getting into the Indian market. And he missed weight. Like, dirty dog. Sorry. Piotr Jan hasn't served his purpose yet. The UFC is going to use Piotr Jan as a stepping stone for Song Yadong. If he loses to somebody else after losing the Yadong, yeah, no, no, no. We're, we're in the realm that he might get cut. Where I was worried is when Piotr Jan, like, accused the judges at Abu Dhabi, accused the UFC of rigging the San O'Malley fight. Now, whether you believe that's true or not, I cannot stress this enough. If you are a UFC fighter, do not say that the UFC rigs fights. You will be cut so quickly, okay? <laughs> do not do that, Piotr Jan. They would cut you just for that. So that's the only instance where I was worried for Jan. He loses to Marab de Vasvili. It is what it is. It really is. We didn't know that Marab had the heart of a Ford F-350 in there. And his cardio is damn near superhuman level. Okay? I, I don't even want to call that a fight. I just call that Marab de Vasvili throwing a 1-2 and going into a double leg. For anybody who's going to say, why are you being disrespectful to Marab? Your dude won, okay? Like, that that type of win is absolutely insane. Take that as a compliment. That, yeah. The, the, yeah, no, no. Piotr Jan, the Aljamain Sterling, didn't even have a corner for that fight. There is an asterisk attached to every single fight. So if he loses the Song Yadong, and if I had to give a prediction, let me tell you what I think is going to happen. This, this is one reason I'm doing this, is give an in-depth talking point of every fight. Let me tell you what I think is going to happen here. Song Yudong is going to win the first round. The second round is going to be a contested battle. There's going to be a lot of striking within the pocket, but I'm also can see some chain wrestling from Pyotr Jan. And the second round, I believe, is going to be the deciding factor of this fight. But I think Song Yudong is more... I don't want to say he's not more experienced, but he's better tuned in that pace to steal the second round from Pyotr Jan. And then we're going into that third round, okay? They don't know who has it. Song Yadong's corner doesn't know who has it. Pyotr Jan doesn't. And then probably somebody in Pyotr Jan's corner is going to say, hey, this is our chance to sign or we're going to get cut. 0-4. Oh, we can't let that happen. They go into the third round, and I think we're going to see one of the most entertaining rounds in MMA. I don't think there's going to be a finish. If, if Pyotr Jan gets finished, it's the end. Okay. So we're in the third round. I think it's going to be one of the better rounds of that night because Piotr Jan's going to be turning it up and Song Yadong's going to have to match it or he's going to be losing that round. But I think Yadong's going to be take the first, 10-9. He's going to take the second, 10-9. The only way that I can see this fight going to Piotr Jan is one, if he gets a finish, or we go to a draw because he's able to 10-8 Song Yadong. But even that would be insane. But that's one reason why this is a three-round fight because... Two rounds go to Song Yudong, one round goes to Pyotr Jan, even though he looked the best. We're, go we're going to Song Yudong. And the discussion around this fight is going to be, and this is where it sets into the UFC's win-win, okay? The UFC wants win-win opportunities wherever they can get them. This is going to be the UFC's win-win in this situation. Song Yudong just beat Pyotr Jan. Pyotr, <clears throat> Pyotr Jan beat Corey Sanhagen. Corey Sanhagen beat Song Yudong. So Song Yudong has just drove straight up the bantamweight rankings and become a fan favorite. Eyes on him in one of the biggest cards of the entire year at UFC 299, sold out arena. They're going to be cheering Song Yudong. That's what, the, that's what Song Yudong gets. That's the win there. What Pyotr Jan's going to get is he's going to look good in this fight. And this is going to be a fight of the night performance. 50k bonus for both of these guys. I really do. The only reason that I would say this fight doesn't get a 50k bonus, and let me tell you what I think is going to happen. I think if Benoit Saint-Denis beats Dustin Poirier, they're going to give the performance bonus to Benoit Saint-Denis, and this fight is going to get a either another performance bonus for the winner, or a fight of the night bonus, and both guys bring home 50k. So, hey, we all get something out of there. But Pyotr Jan gets the win of looking good in this fight. And maybe it's not over. It's still a loss, though. 
we're 0 and 4, 0 and 5. Like now we're, we're this is what we're talking about right now. So what would be next for Piotr Jan? I have two guys. You can either wait for Dominic Cruz if he ever wants to fight again. Dominic Cruz doesn't want to fight Cody Garbrandt. Cody Garbrandt's going to be fighting Davis and Figueredo. You can get the winner of Davis and Figueredo and Cody Garbrandt. Divis and Figueredo and Piotr Jan has been one of my most anticipated matchups, most wish-listed fights in the history of me watching this sport. I really want to see that fight. That's I, th- I think what you should do, Piotr Jan, Divis and Figueredo, okay? Make that either a fight night main event, but you make that thing five rounds. Make that in favor of a Piotr Jan, but also... P- Davis and Figueredo has five round experience. It's in the favor of both of them. We know Figueredo has power for bantamweight. Watch the Rob Font fight. That is the fight that I believe you make after UFC 299 if Piotr Jan loses. Now, if Piotr Jan wins, have Song Yedong fight the winner of have Song Yedong fight the winner of uh shit Davis and Figueredo. Have him fight him. The swap opponents. That's what I think you should do. Now, Piotr Jan, what's next for him if he wins? I think we can do a scenario where maybe we give him the Corey Sanhagen fight again. That was a great fight. Or we can give him Arlen Cheeto Vera. But we'll get into what happens if Cheeto is able to beat O'Malley in the next couple of videos. But I wanted to give a dedicated video just talking about what I think should happen if Piotr Jan loses. Is it the end? No, I don't think it's the end. It's like they, they kept, they're keeping Tony Ferguson around. Okay, like... If Tony Ferguson gets to be kept around, who's, let's be real, is not nearly as good as he used to be. And Piotr Jan, say what you want about Piotr Jan. He's never had a performance that I've been like, well, you look like absolute shit, except for the Marab fight. But I think that's just a case of styles make fights and Marab is a crazy style to fight somebody like Piotr Jan. So, yeah, it's not over for Jan. I think it's going to get a little bit more interesting if he loses, Davis and Figueredo, five-round fight night main event. Make fight nights great again. That's what I say. Fuck the Apex. Anyway, that's going to be it for the video. I believe the next video, I'm either going to be doing MVP versus Kevin Holland and talking about that, or I'll do um, Jack De La Maddalena versus Gilbert Burns. You tell me in the comment section which video you want to see first, and I'll get it to you. And with that out of the way, thank you all for watching, and adios, guys.